Hello friends. In this video, we will continue with XYX 2.2. In the last video, we saw the first four questions of question one of exercise 2.2. So we will continue with the fifth sum, which was to find zeros and verify relationship. In the fifth question, the variable that they have used is t. Again, you observe that it is not a quadratic trinomial. It's a quadratic binomial. Had it been a quadratic trinomial, we would have done splitting the middle term. So one term is missing. In the fourth question, the constant term was missing. So as I said, if the constant term is missing, how would you factorize? You would factorize by taking common. Now, if the x degree one term is missing. Yes, we have the degree 2 term, we have the constant term. What we don't have is the degree 1 term. If the degree 1 term is missing, you will always have a minus sign. Why? Because if you have a plus sign, you cannot find zeros. That very polynomial will never have a zero. So they will compulsively give you a minus sign. And how would you factorize? You would factorize such polynomials using the property of difference of square. That is, you have t square, you write 15 as root 15 square. So what you have now is a square minus b square. And how do we factorize a square minus b square? We write e a plus b and a minus b. So here you factorize this. So what are our zeros? You will write therefore zeros are for plus root 15 the 0 would be minus root 15 and for minus root 15 the 0 would be plus root 15. So here you have your zeros. What will be your value of a comparing coefficient? A is the coefficient of the degree 2 term. So a is 1. B is the coefficient of degree 1 term. In the polynomial we don't have a degree 1 term. So therefore b is 0 and your c is the constant term which is minus 15. Now let's do the verification part. We know a degree 2 polynomial will have two relationships. The first relationship is sum of zeros. Sum of zeros. We know sum of zeros is minus b by a. That is what we will show here. Now our zeros are minus root 15 and plus root 15. Now the sum of minus root 15 and plus root 15 is 0. We have to show that this is equal to minus b by a. So this is equal to minus. What is your b? b is 0 and a is 1. So you write this as b is 0 and a is 1 so 0 can be written as minus 0 by 1 so we have showed that the sum of 0 is equal to minus b by a just put this in word what would you write you will write this as minus coefficient of t upon coefficient of t square the second relationship is product of zeros We know product of zeros is equal to c by a. Our zeros are minus root 15 and plus root 15. So minus root 15 into plus root 15 would be minus root 15 into root 15 is 15. We have to show that this is equal to c by a. c is your constant term. The value of constant term is minus 15 and a is 1. So yes, minus 15 can be written as minus 15 by 1. Last, you write it in word. You will write this as constant term by coefficient of t square. So this was your fifth question of question 1. Now let's take the last question of question 1. The last question of question 1 is a basic sum. The question a polynomial is 3x square minus x minus 4. Now we observe it's a quadratic trinomial. So you know we have to split the middle term. First step in splitting middle term is multiply a and c. 3 into 4 is 12. So you need two numbers which are multiplication gives 12. You have a minus sign here. On subtraction it should give 1. Three numbers which are multiplication gives 2 numbers which are multiplication gives 12 and subtraction 1. Let's start from 1. 1 into 12 is 12. And 12 minus 1 is 11, but you need 1. 
2 into 6 is 12. 6 minus 2 is 4. You need 1. 3 into 4 is 12 and 4 minus 3 is 1. So you got your two numbers. Your two numbers are 4 and 3. When you have a minus sign here, we know one term is positive and the other term is negative. You have a minus here, so the greater number would be negative and smaller number would be positive. So you write this as 3x square minus 4x plus 3x minus 4. What is common in first two? x is common. So what do you have after taking common? 3x minus 4. You have a plus sign here, write the plus sign. What is common? 1. So now what do you have? 3x minus 4. 3x minus 4 is common. So after taking common, what do you have? x plus 1. So you have factorized the polynomial. What are the zeros? The zeros are 4 by 3 and minus 1. I am not doing the verification part. You very well know how to verify. So that is exercise 2.2. Question number 1. Now we will take question 2. So now let's have the understanding behind question number 2. We know that sum of zeros alpha plus beta is minus b by e. And we know product of zeros alpha into beta is c by e. So we have learned this in question 1. Let's say you have a polynomial p of x. You know the general form of a quadratic polynomial is ax square plus bx plus c. Now, if you take a common in this from this polynomial, if you take a common, what do you have here? x square. What will be here? Now, there is no a term, but when you take a common, so you have to divide this term by a. So, after taking a common, b becomes b by a. Look, in case if you open the bracket, a into x square is ax square. a into this term, the a will get cancelled. So what do you have? bx. Same way when you take common c will become c by a. So now, we know x b by a minus b by a is alpha plus beta. But here there is a plus sign. So well, let's write this term in terms of minus b by a. So what you do is, Write plus as minus into minus. We know minus into minus is plus. So plus b by a, we wrote it as minus into minus b by a. Then you have x and this, write it as it is plus c by a. Now, what is minus b by a? You know minus b by a is nothing but alpha plus beta. And what is c by a? c by a is alpha into beta. So any quadratic polynomial can be written as x square minus sum of zeros into x plus product of zeros. What does this a signify here? I will try to explain. Let's say you have a polynomial x square plus 7x plus 12. On doing splitting the middle term, you need Two numbers which are multiplied, 1 into 12 is 12, multiplication gives 12 and on addition should give 7. So we know the numbers are 3 and 4. So you write x square plus 4x plus 3x plus 12. What is common in first 2x? Common in last 2, 3. So now you have x plus 4 common and this is x plus 3. So your factors are x plus 4 into x plus 3. Now let's multiply any constant term to this polynomial. Any number. Let's say we multiply the whole polynomial with 3. So p of x would be 3 into x square plus 7x plus 12. Now if you open the bracket, this is 3x square plus 21x plus 36. Now you think of splitting this polynomial. So what we will do or factorizing this polynomial. So you observe that because you have multiplied 3, 3 is common. Now you take that 3 common, what do you have? And on factorization, we know x square plus 7x plus 12 will give x plus 4 into x plus 3. 
what was the zero of this first polynomial? The zeros were minus 4 and minus 3. Now, what is the zero of the second polynomial after multiplying it with 3? Even if after multiplying it with a constant term, we observe that the zero does not change. It has the same factor. So, zeros would be minus 4 and minus 3. So, what I am trying to make you understand is when you multiply a constant to a given polynomial, the zeros does not change. So, if I ask you, give a polynomial whose zeros are minus 4 and minus 3. So, some could give this as the answer or someone could give this as the answer. Both would have the same zero. Why? Because these two polynomials are same. Only thing, this polynomial when multiplied with a constant term 3, it becomes like this. So, the concept is on multiplying a constant term to a given polynomial, the zeros does not change. The zero remains same. Yeah? So, what, what is the concept here? That is, if you have been given, what is this sum of zero and what is this product of zero? Let's say a question says that if the sum of zeros is 5 and product of zeros is minus 2, find the polynomial. So you will say the general form of a polynomial is k into x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha into beta. We have derived this. In place of a, I am writing k. k is any constant term. Why I am doing this k? Because we have seen here Okay, when you multiply a polynomial with any constant term, the zero does not change. So whatever the polynomial, by multiplying it with a constant term, the zero does not change. Now, x square, what is the value of alpha plus beta? 5. And what is the value of alpha into beta? Minus 2. So this is your required polynomial. So in question 2 of xx 2.2, they will give us sum of zeros and product of zeros and they have asked us to find the polynomial. So let's look at sums of question number 2. It's a very easy question. So we are looking at question number 2 of exercise 2.2. What is the question? Find a quadratic polynomial each with the given numbers as the sum and product of its zeros respectively. So they have given us sum and zeros. Like in the first sum, they have given sum of zeros, alpha plus beta as 1 by 4 and product of zeros, alpha into beta as minus 1. So what would be our approach? We would say the given polynomial Let's say p of x is equal to k into x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha into beta, right? This is the polynomial. Any polynomial would be of this form. Now, what is the value of alpha plus beta? 1 by 4. And what is the value of alpha into beta? Minus 1. So, this is your polynomial you could end the sum here if you want you can also take the LCM so after taking LCM this is 4x square minus x minus 4 upon 4 you can write this 4 outside the bracket so k by 4 4x square minus x minus 4 this is your polynomial then you have to write when k is a non-zero constant. Yes? K can be any value. Any constant value term multiplied to a polynomial will not change the polynomial. Let's do the second sum. In the second sum, they have given the sum of zeros as root 2 and product of zeros 1 by 3 approach remains the same, you write p of x, that is the polynomial will be k into x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha beta. Now you just replace the value of sum and product of zeros. So x square minus, the value of sum of zeros is root 2 
and the value of product of zeros is 1 by 3. You could end your sum here. If you want, after taking LCM, you could write this as 3x square minus, and this 3 comes here, this 3 will multiply, can multiply to root 2, which makes it 3 root 2 plus 1. And the 3 as in the denominator, you can write it outside. And you will say, when k is a non-zero constant. So that was your exercise 2.2.